This is the 14th video in our series looking at how we set up and configure a Google Nest Wi-Fi network. In this video, we're going to review the advanced networking features and options that are built into Google Nest Wi-Fi. However, before we start, it should be noted that as Google Nest Wi-Fi was designed with simplicity in mind, a Google Nest Wi-Fi network will not offer the same number of tweakable options that other models of wireless network do. The first feature that we're going to review is priority, which is simply a form of traffic control. If from within the Google Home app we select Wi-Fi, from within the panel that opens, if we select devices, we are presented with an option to set priority device. While we will be taking a look at this feature in more depth in a future video, the priority feature is a way that we can reserve bandwidth for a specific device so that it will experience less buffering and better download speeds. Let's return to the home screen. If we now select settings, and then from within the home settings panel locate Nest Wi-Fi, when we choose Nest Wi-Fi, the primary network panel will open. It is from within the primary network panel that we will find Google Nest Wi-Fi's advanced network settings. The first option that we're going to take a look at is Family Wi-Fi, which is basically parental controls for our wireless network. While we will be looking at this feature in more depth in a future video, Family Wi-Fi will allow us to pause wireless access on demand, schedule internet timeouts, automatically block adult websites by using Google Safe Search and allow us to control multiple devices through groups. The next option in the list is Guest Network. However, as we've already in a previous video created a wireless network for our house guests, let's take a look at Privacy Settings. As you can see, within Privacy Settings, we are presented with only two options, Nest Wi-Fi Cloud Services and Wi-Fi router and point usage stats. While we currently have both of these settings turned off, depending on how your wireless network is performing and if you trust Google with your data, you may decide to have these settings enabled. However, it's also worth noting that certain features such as priority and family Wi-Fi will require that the Wi-Fi cloud services are enabled. Stadia is Google's online subscription-based gaming service, so the Gaming Preferred option is designed specifically to optimize our wireless network for Stadia traffic. However, while this setting is enabled by default, if you are not playing a game on Stadia, this setting will not be active. WPA, or Wi-Fi Point Access, is a protocol designed to help keep our wireless network secure. However, as WPA3 can cause connection issues with older devices, by default it is not enabled. Let's now take a look at the options in Advanced Networking. Domain Name System, or DNS, is the Internet's equivalent of a phone book. Put simply, DNS is a way to translate domain names into IP addresses or vice versa. While the DNS settings for a Google Nest Wi-Fi network have by default been set to use Google's DNS servers, if you prefer, you can set your Google Nest Wi-Fi network to use a different DNS service. Wide Area Network, or WAN Connection, refers to how our Google Nest Wi-Fi router is connected to our internet connection so the options in this setting will depend on how you've initially configured your Google Nest Wi-Fi router. As you can see, once your Google Nest Wi-Fi router has been connected to the internet, you will not be able to edit the settings in WAN connection. However, a Google Nest Wi-Fi router can be configured to connect to the internet using a number of different protocols. The first option is called DHCP protocol which will be used if you connect your Google Nest Wi-Fi router to a wireless router that your internet service provider has issued you with. The other two options are alternative methods that a Google Nest Wi-Fi router can use to connect to the internet. LAN or local area network refers to the network settings for our home network. 
So it is from within LAN settings that we can control the IP addresses that our home network will automatically issue to other devices. While most home users probably will not need to change any of the options found in LAN settings, when we connect and configure a wireless network printer to our home network, we will be looking at IP addresses and DHCP pool in a little more detail. UPnP, or Universal Plug and Play, is a networking protocol that allows devices on our home network to connect to each other and share data. In a business environment, UPnP is usually disabled as it can adversely affect network performance. However, for a home user, UPnP removes a lot of the complexity associated with running a home network. So for example, as a home user, you may not be familiar with how you create a firewall rule or enable port forwarding in order to get your games console online. However, by having UPnP enabled, that level of complexity is removed because UPnP allows devices on our network to automatically open parts of the firewall built into our Google Nest Wi-Fi router. In the late 1990s, as the internet started to become more popular, Concerns were expressed that we were going to start to run out of public IP addresses needed in order to connect devices to the internet. So a number of steps were initiated, including a plan to replace IP version 4 with IP version 6. As IP version 4 only allows the internet to use around 4 billion connections, and IP version 6 will allow hundreds of trillions of internet connections, a number of internet service providers have started to issue the public with connections that use IP version 6. However, as our Google Nest Wi-Fi router knows that we are currently using a connection with IP version 4, it has disabled this option. DHCP IP reservations allows us to assign a static IP address to a specific device so that that device will always use the same IP address when it's connected to our Google Nest Wi-Fi network. As you would typically use the DHCP reservation settings to configure a device such as a network printer, in a future video, we're going to take a more in-depth look at DHCP reservations. By default, a Google Nest Wi-Fi network will have its firewall enabled. So our firewall will be configured to allow data traffic out of our home network, but only allow specific types of data traffic in. While this will offer enough protection for most home users, if UPnP is unable to automatically open specific firewall ports on our Google Nest Wi-Fi router, we will need to use port management to manually configure our firewall. However, as firewalls and port management can be a little daunting, to try and take the mystique out of the topic, in a future video, we're going to try and connect a Synology NAS to our Google Nest Wi-Fi network so that we can better demonstrate how port management works. Device mode is a setting that allows us to change how our Google Nest Wi-Fi router behaves. However, as we've already created a mesh network, device mode has automatically been set. As you can see from the grayed out information, Device mode is designed to allow us to place wireless routers and points into something called bridge mode. Bridge mode is basically a configuration that disables a feature called Network Address Translation, or NAT. While NAT is very important within our home network, if you are using two wireless routers that both have NAT enabled, this configuration might cause problems for devices such as games consoles that need to send and receive data to the internet. However, as we've already dealt with double NAT in a previous video, we should not have any problems connecting a games console or a network attached storage device to our Google Nest Wi-Fi network. So to summarize, in this video, we reviewed the advanced network features of Google Nest Wi-Fi. While these features are perhaps not as comprehensive as those found in other wireless routers, most of the main networking features needed to run a wireless network are represented in Google's simple to understand user interface. So in order to start looking at these advanced settings in a little more depth, in the next video in this series, we're going to take a look at WPA3 and explain why you might want to switch it on or leave it switched off.